Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and get ready to get super confused. But I'm going to try to keep it as basic as possible, and kind of against my better judgment, I'm also going to, um, how do I say this, I'm going to do this uh, Google video. That's, that's pretty much, I, I think that I'm probably going to get maybe a copyright strike against it, but we're going to try to do it because we're going to be talking about Nevin's Law and quantum computing. Now, there is a new law out there that is suggesting that this could be the year of quantum computing supremacy. Why is that important? Well, it's hugely important because when you look at what this means, this means that we have now a doubly exponential rate on a technology that is going to change the world. What, what A lot of people don't get it, okay? Once quantum computing happens and it's a reality, because a lot of people are saying it can't be a reality. I tend to disagree. I know that some people have said it's already been done. Now, in a lot of those cases, we're talking about quantum annealing, all right, which is a, it's a different kind of process, okay? That, that's, that's all I can really say about that. Like D-wave systems, we're going to get into all of it. But what does this doubly exponential rate mean? Well, it does mean... Uh, that this could be the rise within the next year, and we could break security. Now, what does breaking security mean? Well, we're talking about Claire, cloud fair, flare fixing it, working with Google. And by the way, all these companies are working with the government, okay? NASA, Google, Microsoft, all in the quantum computing game. And we're going to talk about some of the players, especially Helmut Nevin here. Now, Nevin is the one that's going to explain this, and I'm going to try to explain it as quickly as possible. But there's actually another development on top of this. We've talked about how quantum computing, instead of regular uh, on and off, ones and zeros, um, one or the other, they, they're qubits. They're not regular bits, right? So qubits can be one and zero at the same time. They can have a superposition where they create something else, and they can also be strongly entangled when you would think, that they wouldn't be. I know all of this is extremely confusing. However, there's actually a new uh, thing that we're going to talk about. It's called Qtrits. And this has only been talked about in the last couple days. But essentially, you can be a 0, a 1, or a 2. And they talk about how it really could be an infinite number because, once again, there, uh, there is no limits. It doesn't, it doesn't work in that realm. So in December 2018, scientists at Google AI ran a uh, calculation on Google's best quantum processor. They were able to reproduce the co uh, computation using a regular laptop. Then in January, they ran the same test on an improved version of the quantum chip. This time, they had to use a powerful desktop computer All right, to simulate the result. By February, there were no longer any classical computers in the building that could simulate the quantum counterparts. All right. Now this is this is now. We've been talking about this and showing this stuff for years. In fact, I'm going to show the, a video from 2013. I'm going to show you Geordi Rose from 2015 and 2017, and some of the things they're pushing. Um, even exponential growth is pretty fast. It means that some quantity grows by the power of two. All right. Doubly exponential growth is far more dramatic. Instead of increasing by the power of two, quantities grow by the powers of two. All right, if you know base physics, if you know base math and algorithms, think about that. Exponential growth. It seems almost impossible. So now that we have that, you know, people are asking, when will uh, quantum computers outperform regular computers? Well, I think publicly that's going to be coming. And D-Wave is already talking about, about a broader step to commercialization. Now, D-Wave, as you're going to see, are the ones with partnering or did partner with NASA, Google, they had Goldman Sachs money. Um, you know, I did an extensive breakdown of this about a couple years ago for We Are Change. So if you want to see that, definitely go check it out. But here's, the, here's what I was talking about. So they have a new path to reliable quantum um, computation. And again, it's not qubits anymore. Now we're talking about qtrits. And if, if you scroll down, again, they're saying, hey, it doesn't have to be a, a binary code of, of a zero or a one. We're going to use a zero, a one, and a two. While binary logic makes sense for the on-off physics underlying conventional computers, quantum hardware is not inherently binary. All right? So that, they have an infinite 
spectrum. So the qubit is merely an artificially engineered choice of using only two states. And again, encryption. Now, a lot of people are starting to talk about quantum encryption. That's with that uh, cl cloud for it. And circle is uh, what they're trying to uh, use that with. That's a, that's a Google project, by the way. So I would play these clips of Geordi Rose, but I've gotten copyright strikes for them. But in this 2015, by the way, Jordy Rose is not a scientist. He is an entrepreneur. He's a former um, world-class wrestler, very smart guy. But he's going to be in the clip I play. And why is he important? Kind of the spokesperson. And he alarmed people. If you see, I think this thing has uh, over half a million hits. Go check it out. There, there's the uh, title on it. He starts talking about the multiverse in a very, very real way. And that's what I really want to talk about here. And Helmut Nevin, he's another one that talks about this multiverse. And it's been something I'm seeing promoted again and again and again in the public. And Microsoft does it too, and we'll, we'll get into it when we show it. Now, that would mean every single possibility happens. And they're playing that off as a reality. It's all in popular culture, by the way. You know, from um, video games, right? I mean, uh, you even look at uh, the last, what was it? Uh... Justice, in, Injustice, Gods Among Us. Uh, that one, or Gods Among Us 2 or whatever, that was all about the multiverse. You know, and it has been. It's, it's building and building and building. The new Mortal Kombat game has to do with more dimensions. And why do I say that that cheapens life? Because then it says we don't really have free will. I mean, that means there's, you know, an infinite number of Jason Burmeses doing this same very thing, but one of them will pick up his wallet during the video, one of them won't, and one of them will just pick it up and throw it, you know, all these different things. But then you have the very real thing that I guess I would be elevated to, I'd be the president of the United States or the president of the world because every single possibility has to happen, or I would be a terrible person. And it takes free will out of the occasion, uh, equation. I think that's very, very dangerous. I'm not sure exactly what quantum computing is accessing, but it is... Um, it's, you know, something they're talking about with artificial intelligence. And that's why I want to not only point to this video where he talks about some of that, but the multiverse stuff is must listen to. Okay, I'm not endorsing it. I'm not saying it's fake. I'm just saying to watch it. Now, he started, I think Kindred was his new AI uh, venture. And in this, he talks about developing actual aliens. Not, you know, space beams, but he's saying, hey, if we have conscious AI, that is something that is alien to this world. Well... Again, you know, a, he, this is a, a man that believes in the singularity, thinks he's going to be able to upload his consciousness, all that stuff. So I wanted to point to this. We're going to watch this and hopefully not get a copyright strike. We'll see. But this was published in 2013. All right. This is almost six years old. And remember, we're just learning, learning about Qtrits. We're talking about D-Wave now um, being more commercial to other businesses. This is six years old. Watch this. Watch what they're promoting here. Who was it that said, if you think you understand quantum physics, you don't understand quantum physics? Consciousness, intelligence, free will, determinism, black holes, protecting the planet from asteroids, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, atoms, ion traps, nuclear magnetic resonance, superconductors, photons, artificial intelligence, machine learning, past and future, classical physics, time travel. I mean, the whole thing. Okay. So just let's start it off right there. First 30 seconds. Literally everything. Like I just talked about. Time travel free will, black holes, you know, which most people just believe in, but you know it's still a theory, right? We know very, at least the public knows very little about what's going on in space. And that last picture of a black hole was an algorithm based on many satellites working in conjunction uh, with these powerful telescopes to bounce, I believe, uh, waves and create that photo. Okay? So now we got you know, all you, you'll see who these people are. But engineers, where? In that military-industrial complex we all talk about. And, and, you know, I'm utilizing it. Google is very much a part of that. And, yeah, that's the Chrome browser behind me. Guilty as charged. But let's continue. I can tell it's going to get very hot as I start speaking. So tell me if I start to look really shiny. Quantum physics 
puts everything into question. It defies every intuition you have about the natural world. Quantum is a very strange regime of physics. Things can exist in this state of superposition where they could be like ghosting on each other, where they could be this and that at the same time. Entangle. So, so there you go. There's that superposition. And the other thing that's very odd to me is that when we talk about quantum computing, we're allowed to question everything we think is reality. But when people talk about religion, and I'm not trying to be a zealot here, I'm not trying to promote any religion, but you're, you're talked about like you're crazy. Or if you talk about uh, perhaps, you know, even having a soul or, or something of that nature, you're, you're, you're looked upon almost like as a nut job, yet you have all these physicists saying that nothing works the way we think it does. And, you know, basically modern science is crap. <laughs> Quantum entanglement. Two objects, if they're quantum mechanically entangled, are still strongly related to each other, even though they can be a vast distance apart. The notion of the multiverse. There's a whole family of Hartmuts in different states and then going through different experiences. And by the way, that is, I, I was calling him Helmet, that's Hartmut uh, Nevin. That is Nevin's law. And what's he pushing? The multiverse. And watch. This is Hartman the physicist, Hartman the astronaut, different life trajectory. pro wrestler, and now he's a lobster. So that's the next thing. Your, your whole physical being in this uh, multiverse, apparently, is in question. You might not even be a human. Who knows? And that's the, that's the next part of this. You know, so, you know, what, what am I exactly in this multiverse? Am I going to look physically the same? Obviously, that's not the theory. So what are we really accessing? What are we really talking about? I want to get back because we haven't even really scratched the surface of this video. The famous one is quantum tunneling. Tunneling. Tunneling? Tunneling is the slippage between universes. For a long time, people thought those effects only existed in the microscopic domain. Like uh, atoms, <laughs> electrons, photons. But really, it's the theory of our universe. So if you want to build a quantum computer, you want to incorporate those new phenomenon into information processing. So let's also stop it there. There they're talking about how they've already done all these things. You know, they were showing you superposition and all that other stuff uh, on, you know, a small level, photons, electrons, atoms. But they want to do it on a, on a very real, physical, human level. That should be frightening. <laughs> that should, I mean, that, I mean, again, it calls into question reality, but... Who's toying with that reality and who's in charge of it? The good people at Google? The good people at NASA? Maybe quantum computation is one of those instruments that's going to allow us to see quantum effects at the human scale. Google and NASA have teamed up to share one of the world's first commercial quantum computers. This machine, made by Canada's D-Wave, will be installed in a NASA research center in California. So once again, you know, NASA, artificial intelligence, Google, quantum computing, and what you're going to see here, um, you know, they're going to show you is that the quantum computer at this point, it's, it's just a chip, but they have to put it in those large boxes just to get it so cold with this uh, conductor in order to get it to work. And then they hook it up to very traditional computers. These are quantum annealing computers, which some contest aren't real quantum computers, but again, they've dumped a lot of money into this. This is the inside of uh, one of our dilution refrigerators. All of this infrastructure is to basically operate the chip at a temperature that's two orders of magnitude colder than interstellar space. The, the processor is a quantum computer. See, look at all that equipment on top. And this is what we're talking about is the, is the quantum computer right here. And then if you saw, you know, I, there's videos out there where they take you around and you get to really take a look at um, what, what's reading out. It uses things called qubits, as well as being either one or a zero. A qubit can also be both at the same time. And now, again, we're talking about qubits. This is breaking news. This is brand new. That's six years ago. 
Now we're talking June 21st, 2019. We're finding out the qubits are in fact going to be obsolete. And it's an arbitrary number. And we're probably going to see, I, I don't really know where it goes from here. I'm not a quantum uh, uh, physicist. Couldn't tell you guys. Therefore bringing about a quantum leap in terms of power. Harnessing principles of reality that are up until very recently completely not observable by us is just fascinating in ways that I can't completely articulate. I agree. The overwhelmingly obvious killer app for quantum computation is optimization. By the Otherwise, way, there's Giordi. There's the guy that's going to tell you that the multiverse is absolutely real. That was uh, very much one of the guys behind D-Wave and now behind Kindred. And again, he's one of those Kurzweilian people that wants to create artificial intelligence and also upload his consciousness. Optimization problems are, are extremely difficult problems. Actually, all Google server centers together will not be capable of coming up with the best solution to these optimization problems as they get larger. So now what is an optimization problem? Here, give you an example. You want to do a trip through South America and you want to visit a number of cities. And then you ask, what is the cheapest ticket I can get to visit, let's say, 20 um, cities? And you can, of course, different routes and, and different uh, airlines. And sort of imagine I list all the different options I have for my different routes to travel to these cities. We currently, as a civilization, we just... And by the way, that's all Helmet. Helmet's a smart guy. Uh, and I believe he was one of the people where he is. I'm not sure if he's still working for Google, but at the time, I think he was a direct Google employee. Generate vast amounts of data. It could be climate data, genomic data, but it's very difficult to generate useful insights off times from that data. If you can solve optimization problems better, you have an important resource at your hand. At least it teaches us that we shouldn't be naive about our world, that we shouldn't think about the world as a simple machine. It forces us to consider, you know, more sophisticated notions of how the reality around us is actually shaped. I can't ask it how long I'll live or the meaning of life. Really? We don't know what the best questions are to ask that computer. That's exactly what we're trying to understand now. To me, the most important question is, are we alone? All right, so let's stop it here. So now we're also talking about actual physical aliens. And if you haven't noticed, and you know what? I think I'm going to do a completely separate video on UFOs and the latest craze and, you know, uh, the resurgence of the Bob Lazar story, Mirage Men, and more, because I think that's a... That's a really interesting topic. It's one that's fascinated me since I was, you know, a kid. But here we are, the alone in the universe question. And what are they promoting? You know, simulation, multiverse, time travel, aliens. All, all these different things that kind of, again, undermine us being individual free will beings that have a purpose. And I have a feeling that quantum computers, as they mature, are going to help us answer that question. This is, of course, a more long-term research endeavor, and there are still tremendous um, obstacles and, and big questions. Some of those will be addressed in D-Wave. Some will be addressed at NASA, and some at Google. I wasn't sure I would be able to experiment with a quantum computational device in my lifetime, and now I'm confident that I will be able to. How amazing it is that... By the way, so she's NASA now. Geordi Rose is talking. And I just want to say this. Um, I am a, a big uh, micro-evolution guy, macro-evolution. I think that's a, a different subject. And right here, you're going to have Geordi talk about how we have, like, we, we evolved from chimp-like brains. I don't know we did that. Look, I'm not saying that, you know, I have definitive proof that we didn't evolve from uh, primates. But there really hasn't been a lot of proof out there that we are uh, derived from that. And let me also say this. Um, when, you, when you go that route, when you go that evolution route, then all of a sudden it's like, well, this is maybe just a husk we should get rid of. I think that's dangerous. And again, that's what they're selling here. We, with our 
monkey heritage and monkey brains and monkey fingers have somehow lucked into a brain lucked in that allows us to ask legitimate questions about the nature of physical reality that's so cool is that human risk to go forth into that unknown frontier i'm fine with unknown frontiers guys but again, think about that, that we lucked into a monkey brain. Did we? Or are, are, are we lucked out of it? I, I don't know. So, you know, I have a lot of questions out there. I'm a pro-tech guy, by the way. I, I love technology. But now, with uh, qubits turning to qtrits, with the possibility of quantum uh, computing becoming commercialized a lot quicker than we think, with now Nevin's Law talking about the doubly exponential effect um, I think we're in for a whirlwind. And remember, all you crypto heads out there, be careful. Because this could, you know, aside from the internet security issues, the crypto security issues are extremely real as well. Folks, if you like this video, we are pumping them out. We are pumping out three, four, five, six, sometimes seven videos a day. Although this is number one, later on uh, in the evening, I will have Dylan Avery on for an Ask Me Anything style broadcast where we talk about his latest documentary film, Black and Blue, and much more. If you haven't seen my work on Linda Collins Smith, The Bohemian Grove, Iran, Egypt, uh, the, the Infowars CP hoax, China, and more, please subscribe right now. Join the Burmese Brigade. It costs you absolutely nothing. Ring that bell, but you probably won't get the notification. So just blue star it, and there will be new videos. <clears throat> Guys, I'm also 100% on my own and uh, a week into, uh, a little under a week, into my GoFundMe. It's $5,000 a month. I'm trying to do this full time and give you actual news from a non-partisan perspective. It's not about left or right. It's always been about right or wrong. And on schedule, we are about a quarter of the way there. Thank you so much for your $5, $10, $15. Any of that helps. And, you know, it's, it's a no bullshit deal. I'm going to do 30 to 50 videos a week. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to tell you the truth, and hopefully you like my work and you support me. If not, share the videos and uh, get out there and be the change you want to see in the world, guys. I will see you all on the flip side.